Hi, welcome to my short presentation about parameter optimization for loop closure detection in closed environments. I'm Nils Rotman and these are my colleagues. So I hope you enjoy my talk and uh, let's begin right away. Let me start with short motivation. So in general, we want to um, consider here mapping algorithms. And what we like to do is to map the environment of, for example, some uh, lawn field or lawn environment. And what we would like to have is kind of a mapping of the boundary line like this, so that we can then efficiently um, take care of the lawn, so more, more efficiently can do some planning algorithms and so on. Also, we could uh, think also of uh, household robots like um, vacuum cleaners and so on. And for mapping, such environments, in general, we need some uh, parameter fine tuning for our mapping algorithms. And this is a big problem since we want to have truly autonomous systems. So robots which we can simply place in any kind of environment and the robots will do their job there. So that would be a truly autonomous system. But however, since we in general require some fine tuning of our parameters, of our mapping parameters, um, we have to know a bit beforehand of our um, environment, for example, and of our robot, of course. For example, how are the automatic parameters uh, and so on. And this is a big issue, so what we try to solve here is to find a kind of a cost function uh, with which we can then learn um, our mapping parameters so that our robot can act truly autonomous. And what we propose here is kind of a parameter optimization for closed environments. And for this parameter optimization, we will define a cost function and then use simple Bayesian optimization uh, for optimizing these parameters. And our requirements here are that our robot can somehow follow the wall of uh, our closed environment with some kind of wall following algorithm and is able to um, traverse several times along the boundary line so that we get here kind of several boundary line traversals which we can use then for our um, cost function. So our example which we use here um, throughout the talk is based on some lawnmower since we are developing also some um, grass sensors for our lawnmowers and this is our kind of walkthrough example. So just imagine we have now, after traversing several times along, along the boundary line, these kind of data. So these are kind of vertices from our post graph, and these are the connections, the automatic connections, uh, basically the automatry measurements. So then we can, can define kind of a similarity function based on um, the orientation of, uh, between the vertices of the post graph. So we look at the one vertice and of the neighborhood of these vertices and then check where in which region it's identical and then we can say okay here this point and this point for example so this vertice and this vertice they are kind of the same because the structure at the neighborhood is exactly the same and so what we can do there is say, okay, they should be placed at the same point, at the same location. So we can add a kind of a loop closing constraint or kind of a loop closing uh, measurements. However, there are a lot of parameters which we have to um, set here, for example, the length of the neighborhood for comparison and so on. But when we define that and we found some, uh, some loop closing pairs of the vertices, then we get kind of a distance of the boundary line U. Okay, and that we can do for all of the vertices. So this vertice here would have uh, a loop closing pair with this vertices here, okay? And what we get when we put all together, we get kind of a comparison error. So we compare each vertice with each other. And then we get kind of these matrix, which shows us here these um, dark lines where we have kind of similar um, really good loop closing pairs. So of course, uh, if we compare exactly the same vertices with the same vertices, we get in a zero error, but which is interesting, if we compare like this vertice, so this vertice with this vertice, we get also really low error. 
and as you can see we get here similar distances which are kind of the um, circumference of our um, closed environment. So and that's basically our loop closing, loop closure detection approach, uh, which I not, which I just wanted to give uh, as a short overview. Let me state the idea of our approach now. So let the odometry error be Gaussian with zero mean, and some covariance p. Then the length of a traversal along the complete boundary line, so u, um, measured between any boundary line vertices is also Gaussian and it's u with some mean and some uh, variance. So basically that means if we compare two, um, two vertices here of our um, post graph and they are loop closing pairs like this and this one here, then we get some distance if we are following up this uh, line and accumulate the odometry measurements. And this distance has a mean value um, of u, of mu u, and some variance sigma. Okay, if we are assuming this. I know this is kind of a hard restriction or um, hard constraint, since in general we have slippage on odometry and so on. Um, but however it works in, in uh, real life, we demonstrated this on some examples, but it is kind of a hard assumption. So how can we use now this fact that we have some zero, uh, some mean u and some variance uh, sigma u uh, for our distances between two loop closing pairs? So what we can do now, we can define a Gaussian mixture model. Um, so basically we learn a Gaussian mixture model based on all the information which we get when we um, compare all the, or when we calculate all the distances between each loop closing pair we found. And we put all these information, so all the use, into our Gaussian mixture model and then uh, define the no negative log likelihood. So we got here kind of the negative log likelihood of our system. And what we get then is kind of this scenario here. Uh, so what do you see here? If we have really ill-chosen parameter, we get a lot of different views uh, with the different distances. So for example, we get um, we get here some peaks. However, this looks quite good, but we get a lot of other really um, nasty stuff here around. So we get a lot of kind of um, Gaussian models for Gaussian mixture models. So basically, a lot of a uh, lot of um, instances. And what we're doing now here we um, optimize our log likelihood or negative log likelihood until it's not further improved. So we increase the instances of our Gaussian mixture model. So we include more and more um, Gaussian distributions for our Gaussian mixture model. So we increase this K and until the, like, li the neg negative log likelihood um, doesn't get better. So good if it's quite um, low. And then we had our kind of our cost value. And if we have really well chosen parameters, we get kind of this system. So we got a really deep decline and then find quite early our uh, um, optimal settings or, or optimal K. And as you can see here, we have here um, four distinct points uh, with our um, use and they have all the same distances um, as promised. So we got here a one traversal, two, three, four. So with this system, uh, we tested it on four traversals along the boundary line. Um, this is why we have here four times U and here just one time U, two times U and so on and so forth. Um, but the distance between each of these, um, these hills basically, or these bars is um, U so the um, circumference of our boundary line. 
and we can now use this negative log likelihood for defining our cost function. So we want to optimize the hyperparameters of our mapping approach uh, by minimizing the negative log likelihood and the negative logarithm of the number of loop closing pairs or of loop closures which we found. So that ensures that we uh, get kind of trade-off between um, the number of loop closures found and um, the number of uh, and the value of the uh, negative log likelihood. Uh, why is that so or why do we need that? Because if we simply just have one loop closure we get a really really well chosen uh, negative log likelihood uh, but that would be not really appropriate for our algorithms. We need a bit more loop closures to really define a good, a good uh, map of the environment. So that's the basic idea. Um, again, we have this strong assumption that we have aut uh, zero odometry error, uh, mean zero mean odometry error. And I know this is a quite strong assumption, but as we will see now, it works quite well. Now let's start by just testing our proposed algorithm or proposed hyperparameter optimization method in some simulated environments. Um, this is of course a kind of favorable test since uh, when we define our odometry error we can simply define some uh, zero mean odometry error which then fulfills definitely our assumption. But it's quite a good test if it works on different different schemes and different environments. So we tested um, tested three maps, so map one, map two, map three. As you can see here, they have all different shapes, they're all different sizes and so on. And what we did, or what we find out, is that our um, hyperparameter learning algorithm, algorithm was able to find uh, accurate map estimates for each of the map and was able to learn these meter parameters quite fast. Uh, so we could uh, get really good results, which was, or which have been even a bit better, or at least in the same region than with uh, hand, just hand adjusted parameters. So we tested it also th with the same algorithm when we hand crafted the parameters until we are were, um, satisfied with the map ring results and then we compared it to our um, to our learning approach. But of course, our learning approach enables the robots to be really autonomously. So it's quite favorable instead of handcrafting the parameters, especially if you think about um, if you think about like uh, lawn mowers and so on, um, the normal user do not want to um, adjust some parameters depending on its own lawn. What it want to uh, the user want to just buy the mower and just put it on its or on his or her lawn and then go with it. So um, parameter learning is here really a um, crucial thing to uh, enable autonomous systems to be easily handleable. Um, but however, we know that in simulation is not enough, so we tested it also on a real garden event. Basically, we tested on two garden, garden environments. Let me just show you one. So we have here the odometry data. Here on the left, you can see the garden environment. Um, so we have here kind of this garden structure. It goes here farther away and so on. And as you can see, uh, we get kind of a messy odometry data. They're really not, not nicely shaped. And we got really some problems to uh, map it quite efficiently. Uh, with handcrafted parameters, so it was quite hard to find some parameters which worked, but our uh, learning algorithms find it quite easily. So we got then this result, which is um, at least quite accurate. So we got like this structure here, we got here this line, which is this here, and we got here this line around the, um, the tree, which is this line here, then we got here this line, we got here this small um, crease, and so on so that we get here these kind of lines. However, it's not perfectly accurate, but it gives us a list, at least uh, some kind of notice um, of the environment shape. 
Um, if we improve, of course, the odometry error, so this is quite high or quite large odometry error, um, but improving this odometry error, for example, in introducing another IMU and so on, and fusing these uh, sensors together, that will lead to much more um, better map estimates. Overall, I think that's a quite good first result and shows that our um, mapping algorithm or our um, hyperparameter learning algorithm works quite well. Oh, let's come to the end, to our conclusion and uh, some discu discussion about uh, future work. Um, let's start with the conclusion. We showed that we can learn meter parameters for closed environments and this learning leads to actual map estimates of these closed environments. Of course, we demonstrated this, um, this hyperparameter learning only with uh, some autonomous law movers. And this is one big issue um, of this work. Um, however, it enables us to at least show that truly autonomous systems are um, possible so that we can really um, learn these parameters and let, robot, um, discover, uh, let robots discover their own world, own environment and adjust the parameters according to their um, own environment. And this makes it much easier for consumers to, um, to really use these robots. However, as I already mentioned, we just tested it on autonomous lawnmowers and kind of our um, system or approach is kind of designed for these autonomous lawnmowers. Um, but what we do or what we want to do in future work is to um, use our approach for learning also uh, for some other robots like, um, like, like indoor mobile robots, which are equipped with some LiDAR and so on. And therefore our approach should also work. We are just right now working on it. So the idea is that we again cycling several times uh, along the environment. For example, if we have an office building, we can somehow cycle around in each, each room and so on and detect everything. Um, this is quite a complicated thing because we need for our approach kind of um, estimate between some loop closures uh, between the boundary line to estimate then the um, circumference of our uh, of our map, but I think it's possible, or we're just defining it, that it's possible to um, recalculate based on the uh, sensor measurements and the odometry data to define also again a kind of circumferences which we then can use for optimization approach for the hyperparameters of some algorithm. So basically, when we are um, going around an environment and we don't follow exactly the um, boundary line, but we um, see the boundary line with, for example, LiDAR, we can then recalculate, hopefully, the, um, the boundary line of the uh, environment and, then f and thus find then suitable, uh, suitable uh, information about our um, system. Um, however, we are just right now testing this uh, and hopefully it will work. So uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and I'm happy for a good discussion um, about the approach and about uh, possible improvements.